This stock is at $32.07 a share. Yahoo analysts estimate that it can move up to $57 a share in the next 12 months. Hey guys, today we're going to be going through the analysis on a stock called Expel Inc. Now, you know I like to, for those who watch my channel, I like to break my stocks down into three tiers on my watch list. Three star, the most fundamentally sound. Two star beneath that. One star, the least fundamentally sound, but still fundamentally sound enough to make the watch list. Expel Inc. is a three star. Now, this week that just passed, they took a dramatic drop. Look at this green candle. But we want to see what they're going to do moving forward. Will they continue to drop, start to move sideways, or start to move up? This stock is at $32.07 a share. Yahoo analysts estimate that it can move up to $57 a share in the next 12 months. Now, this stock I'm particularly excited to present to you guys because I actually have a programmer right now working on an app for me that will analyze the stocks the way that I'm currently doing manually it will do automatically for one myself and for you guys you'll be able to analyze stocks on your own at home and what it does is it doesn't analyze any stocks it analyzes fundamentally sound stocks which have dropped to their annual low price presenting you with opportunities so having said all that let's jump into the analysis on this stock but before we jump into the analysis i just want to mention a couple of things to you guys one is that this stock that I'm presenting to you and the others which are on my watch list, they actually come from a series that I drop on the YouTube channel, This Week's Stock Winners, where I let you know which fundamentally sound stocks that are coming off of their annual low price are finally starting to move up. I provide one of you one of these to you every week. Also, in the channel I do a this month's option pick. I used to do a this week's option pick. Although I'm not doing that anymore on the YouTube channel, it is available in my Patreon membership you'll see the link to my patreon on the home page of my youtube channel so these are just two um series on my youtube channel that you guys want to view that you want to keep an eye on if you're interested in taking advantage of opportunities in the market having said that Let's jump into the analysis on this stock. And we're looking at Expel Inc. Ticker symbol is XPEL. Now, if you look in the description of this video, I'll drop a link to a video in the description where you could actually see what Expel Inc. does. But in any event, if we look at the earnings per share for this company, 
In 2019, it was 51 cents. 2020, 66 cents. 2021, a dollar 14. 2022, a dollar 50. 2023, a dollar 91. And 2024, which we're in so far, it's at a dollar 74. These are projections. So it can drop a little, it can stay the same, it can move up. But so far, we're at a dollar 74. Now, notice, look at the last five previous years. The earnings per share increased every year kind of things we want to see with a company we'll see if it's the same thing when we look at the income statement but if we look at the high and low prices for the previous years i don't have 2019 but in 2020 at its low this was the covid lockdown year at its low price the stock was down eight to $8.63 a share. At its high, it went up to $53.34 a share. Now, that was an increase of 518.08% over that year. Imagine a stock increasing, not an option, a stock increasing 518% in 2021. At the low, the stock was down to $46.17. At the high, it was at $101.41. That was an increase of 119.62% over the course of the year in 2022 at the low it was at $41.69 a share at the high it went up to $86.38 a share that was an increase of 107.20 percent in one year and in 2023 at the low, it was at $43.51 a share. At the high, it went up to $86.64 a share. That was an increase of 99.13% over that year. So, for the four years we've had on record, This company has done over 90, 99% returns just on the stock, not talking about options, just on the stock. Yahoo analysts estimate that this stock can move up to $57 this year from a low price of $32.07, that will be an increase of 77.74%. So, not exactly near 100 like it's done the five previous years, but even if it only goes up 77%, that's a significant amount for stock increases, whereas a lot of stocks just increase some 20%, many 30%, 40%. In any event, let's look at the P.E. ratio. Because the P.E. ratio, the low P.E. ratio can let us know if we're in a buy range. Now, the low P.E. ratio for 2020 was 13.08. We're above that right now. We're at 18.43. But the low P-E ratio in 2021 was 
the low PE ratio in 2022 was 27.79, and the low PE ratio in 2023 was 22.78. So we're actually below the low PE ratios for 21, 22, and 23. And bear in mind, 2020 it was lower, it dropped to 13.08. But 2020 was COVID lockdown years. Now, this company has, an, well, the earnings report actually already dropped which may have been the reason for the significant drop in price. But if we look at the free cash flow yields, it is 1.65%. Now let's take a look at our income statement. And Bear in mind, guys, the reason I found out about this company is because I have a developer working on an app so that all of this stuff that I'm doing manually on spreadsheets will be done automatically. The numbers will be pulled in automatically just there for you guys to analyze which if you're not able to do that currently you will be able to do that after watching my tutorial and in the beginning stages of this app it will probably still take about a month to get completed but in the beginning stages of this app it's already giving me companies to analyze and this was one of them so i'm very happy with the direction that it's currently going in. But in any event, let's look at the income statement. In 2019, this company made $129,933,000. Of that, they retained $13,978,000. After paying all expenses, that was a 10.76% profit margin. In 2020, they made 158,924,000 in sales and revenue. Of that, they retained 18,282,000 after paying all expenses. That was an 11.50% profit margin. In 2021, they made 259263000 After paying expenses, they retained 31567000 That was a 12.18% profit margin. Notice the sales and revenue are increasing every year. It's not a large company. I know 129 million, 259 million. It sounds like a lot, but compared to a lot of companies out here making hundreds of millions and billions and so forth, this is a small company working its way up. But now we come to 2022 in sales and revenue they made 323 million 993,000 of that they retained 41 million 381,000 after paying expenses that was a 12.77% profit margin and in 2023, 
they made three hundred and ninety six million two hundred and ninety three thousand of that they retained fifty two million eight hundred thousand after paying all expenses that was a thirteen point thirty two percent profit margin so this company's sales and revenue increased every year for the previous five years. The net income increased every year for the previous five years. And the profit margin even increased every year for the previous five years. Now, if we go down to return on equity, we see that their return on equity in 2019 was 40.06%. In 2020, it was 34.25%. In 2021, 37.37%. 2022, 33.18%. And 29.34%. I would say that their return on equity is outstanding. You may see a company at around 10% return on equity. That would be, I say, decent. 20% return on equity. And I would say that's great. I like that. But their return on equity from 29 to 40 for the previous five years, I would say that's great. Now, it has been dropping the more previous years, but not significantly. And if we look at the debt to equity, it's really in control. 47.88% in 2019, 57.05% in 2020, 90.64% in 2021, 55.03% in 2022, and 40.03% in 2023. I find it challenging to find companies with debt to equity under 200%. And here these guys are all under a hundred. Well, I should say th this guy's years are all under a hundred. Having said that, if we look at the balance sheet, we'll see that their current assets exceeded their current liabilities for all five years, which we like to see and more than double them or at least double them each of those years and the total assets exceeded the total liabilities for all five years and at least doubled or more than doubled them in those five years which we love to see This company is not paying a dividend and they actually in the last five years, we know when it comes to these companies and their stocks, we don't like to see a company selling more shares of stock. We do like to see them buying back more shares of stock. In the previous five years, this company didn't do either. They, they weren't selling more shares. They weren't buying back more shares. Now, if we go to the free cash flow, Nine million four hundred and sixty-five 
thousand in twenty nineteen, sixteen million seven hundred and forty five thousand in twenty twenty, eleven million six hundred and nine thousand in twenty twenty one, four million one hundred and ninety four thousand in twenty twenty two, and thirty one million fifty seven thousand in twenty twenty three. Now, one of the primary things that I look at when it comes to free cash flow is that since the dividend comes from the free cash flow, I'd like to look and see if the company has enough free cash flow to pay out these dividends that they're giving away. In this case, this company doesn't give a dividend, so that's not a factor. Now, the beta, which tells us the volatility of the stock, of a beta of one means it moves about as much as the market. A beta of under one, it moves less than the market. A beta of over one, means it moves more than the market. It's more volatile than the market. This stock has a beta of 1.77. So it's more volatile than the market, a bit more. Like I said, they have no dividends. They currently have 27.63 million outstanding shares of this stock on the market. Of those shares, 22.12% are owned by insiders. That are those who work for the company or are involved with the company. And 69.51% are owned by large banks and institutions. They have a PB ratio, a book value of six point of six dollars and seventy-five cents a share, which gives us a PB ratio of four point seven five. Now, this company, Mr. Ryan L. Pape, born 1982, sounds like a youngster to me, is the chairman, president, and CEO. And he was appointed CEO in 2009. Now, let me explain my comments sounds like a youngster because in analyzing these companies i find that many of the ceos are actually older than me and i'm 58 so someone born in 82 this person is around maybe in their 40s or so. So they're not young overall, but for a CEO and a president of a company, they can be young, well, what I would consider or say young. In any event, Expel Inc. is in the auto parts industry, consumer cyclical sector. And that's my analysis for this stock, guys. I look forward to speaking to you in the next video. Have a great day.